Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, this is uh, the panel uh, for observation, insights, and opportunity for the future. We have uh, some distinguished panelists, uh, and each of them uh, will have, uh, unfortunately, only 10 minutes time, because uh, the rest of the time uh, we want to hear from you, from the audience, uh, and have your suggestion and feedback uh, for uh, our academy future uh, activities. Uh, so uh, I'm going uh, here uh, as uh, my list uh, from the original panel. We start uh, with Isabella Boone, uh, that is a, a research fellow at Regent Park College uh, University of Oxford. Uh, and uh, 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 you are many more things, say Isabella, and it might be it's better that you present yourself. Uh, uh, you know yourself uh, much better than uh, this ignorant uh, colleague of yours. Go ahead, uh, Isabella. Thank, thank you very much, Alberto. And what a wonderful way to begin with the assertion that I am many things. And indeed, everyone on this panel is many things. But yes, I'm joining you from Oxford, where I've been based for about 30 years. I'm an international lawyer by background and also a former professor of business ethics. So my area of interest is really at the intersection of global governance and corporate governance in particular lately. And so the work of the Academy has been very informative and also inspirational. So it's a privilege to join you today and to uh, understand some of the previous speakers and how they can also inform our reflections. And I'm very grateful to the, the younger generation as well for their wisdom. One phrase that sticks in my mind about the World Academy is its invocation of the Russell Einstein Manifesto of 1955. And, and there's this very, I would say, memorable, evocative phrase uh, at the dawn of the nuclear age, which is remember your humanity and forget the rest. But I have to say in the few years that I've been observing the World Academy and Gary and the other leaders, their incredible work to incorporate an interdisciplinary perspective, to engage with leaders across the world, to think about global security and how that could be an anchor for the work of the Academy itself, its remarkable relationship with civil society organizations. And I think really one of my big lessons from them is how seriously they take trust and how seriously they take collaboration. And I think perhaps this is a future area to really have them develop for the community some of their lessons and experiences and how it can help all of us going forward. So remember your humanity and forget the rest. I just have to say that no, uh, the World Academy has uh, not forgotten the rest. Um, in fact, I think that my uh, new motto for them might be, remember your humanity and leverage the rest. I feel this constant energy and dedication on the part of the Academy to do as much as possible with their resources, with their connections around the world. And I think it is a, a challenge to us as well. Can we leverage this moment? Can we look to what we know, who we know, what our networks might be, what opportunities that we see for the future? How can we advance various ideas and projects? What can we leverage, uh, literally, where we are and who we are? So I find that that old phrase still an inspiration, but also that we do not ignore the rest. We actually look at everything around us to see how we can help accomplish the vision. And this grand challenge, and that's how I see it, I think that Gary has put before us a grand challenge, and our program indicates that we have this global social moment to promote human security for present and future generations. It's a very clearly articulated and very visionary statement. And I think that WAS is, uh, the World Academy is ideally positioned to lead this challenge. And I think again, because they do work on a multidisciplinary global basis, they care deeply about collaboration and they have great experience and expertise in that field. And it also builds trust. And I think all of that helps catalyze really countless ideas into action. We've had a small sample of that even during our conversations today. 
I was also reminded about the enormous breadth of values that the World Academy represents. And as I was hearing the presentations and reflecting on some of the earlier materials, perhaps there is scope in the future for the World Academy, which is really without parallel, I would have to say, on, on the global stage, to develop a platform, perhaps a global platform for values in a uh, maybe philosophical way, perhaps in a uh, leadership way. But I think the key would be, how do you implement them into action? And I think that this could be a tremendous resource, literally for the world, not just for our community and the communities that we're involved with. But I don't think there's anything quite like this. There are obviously various lists and efforts and values have been pursued for many different times, including uh, in, in Europe and in America and in other places. But I think that it's quite a unique opportunity, perhaps, for the Academy to consider drawing on the knowledge base that they have in so many diverse not just geographies, but also specializations and disciplines to look at those values and how then do they really inform action. As far as opportunities for the future, maybe just briefly mention four areas uh, that reflect my own work that I find um, challenging, obviously, but also I see this opportunity with the World Academy to help develop some of these ideas and to promote concrete action. One area, of course, is the human rights agenda. Last year marked the 75th anniversary. There's nothing like an anniversary to concentrate the mind. We know this of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And at the same time, even though we were having tremendous discussions, you know, I also specialize in international human rights law about the nature of human rights. Problems of security continue to persist. And indeed, you may remember that the Secretary General announced a code red for humanity. So while we're celebrating everything we've accomplished for rights, at the same time, I think all of us on this call are acutely aware of the failures of human rights and how much further we need to go. So one of my favorite, and uh, my favorite, the favorite article of the Universal Declaration that I have is Article 28, and I'm going to read it to you. It is very short. It affirms a social and international order in which the rights and freedoms set forth in this declaration can be fully realized. So that was 75 years ago. We still have not fulfilled that ambition, but I think it spurs us to keep looking at essentially the question of order. What is the social and international order and what can we do to shift the order so that it better promotes all forms of human rights. So that is a challenge. But related to that, it's also interesting that Article 28 is invoked in what they call in shorthand, sometimes they call it third generation rights, often solidarity rights. So in other words, the right to peace, the right to development, the right to a healthy environment. This is often anchored in Article 28. And I think this may be perhaps an overlooked area for many organizations. They focus on economic, social, political rights, um, cultural rights, and other perhaps better known uh, standards that are encapsulated in, in various charters and in various conventions. But there is traction for these rights, these solidarity rights, these third generation rights to be moving forward and helping to inform global governance. So I think that could be an interesting area for the World Academy to think about. Article 28 and uh, what can the Academy do to help create that kind of a social and international order, which is so close to also areas of the uh, security agenda that we've been talking about. The next aspect, of course, very broadly is the justice agenda. And I think everyone uh, on this uh, call can think of an interlinkage between their work and questions of justice. And I think that is why it is such a rich topic, a multidisciplinary topic for all of us to start thinking about how does justice relate to what we are doing. Uh, it's been very interesting to see that the human aspects of justice, the lived experience of individuals of justice is becoming much more in focus. Um, also, that the justice language is used in terms of identifying how we must move beyond problems like climate change, the just transition using that justice language and building into that system of deliberations, looking after the poorest and most vulnerable in society as that transition takes place. Something we've heard a lot about today, AI, technology, information, misinformation, 
whole nother realm of what is AI governance, what is justice within the virtual realm, and of course also the access to the technology, which becomes a justice question, that question of digital inclusion, digital access, which is becoming so much more important for education, for financial transactions, for uh, participation in, in the global economy and the global society. So lots of questions on the technology side. The other aspect um, that I've become familiar with through my work with the American Bar Association, the justice defenders, we call them for short, the one, the advocates for human rights, the journalists, the lawyers, the judges, the various uh, groups and civil society agencies that are involved in the legal process, they are under threat around the world. And I think that a question that I've been asking myself, can this concept of global security, which obviously has a huge justice dimension, also focus on the personal security of the justice defenders? All around the world, we see this. And unfortunately, as we're now in an election cycle in the United States, we're gonna be seeing a lot more of a man manipulation of uh, media and also the suppression of justice defenders uh, in various interests around the world. Um, another area is private sector. So I've done a lot of work on essentially the ethical responsibilities of business going back uh, a number of decades. And I think this is a phenomenal time for the private sector, including the financial markets, to be thinking through what their social and environmental responsibilities may be. And we're familiar with organizations such as the United Nations Global Compact and many other standards that are encouraging the behavior. Um, also, the UN guiding principles on business and human rights have been revolutionary in thinking through how the government has to protect human rights, but business has an obligation to respect human rights. And that has transformed not just the interaction between business and these issues and including the United Nations, but also practices. And this is also now driven with regulation and also with due diligence aspects, including uh, on the environmental social governance ESG side. Um, I've just finished a project for the UN Global Compact on what the private sector can do to support SDG 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions. So that was very challenging and also very interesting. And I think that will pay, uh, pay dividends because we all know on this call, and I see the, of course, our SDG pins around the room, um, but I am a little biased as a lawyer. It's my favorite SDG is 16, Peace, Justice, Strong Institution, in and of itself is valuable, but I see it as a foundation and a catalyst for the entire SDG agenda. Uh, it is not something you cannot really pursue many of the goals unless you have that foundation in place for peace and justice and strong institutions. And so finally, that just leads me to the question of maybe governance uh, more broadly. There is a lot of interesting activity on governance. And I think, for example, at the Simpson Center on Human Security and Governments at NYU, who are, uh, I think, especially in their global governance survey, also show how uh, how uh, how to respond. I see the clock is being held up very elegantly. Let me just also just then mention briefly the World Justice Project and their annual uh, rule of law index and the Institute for Economics and Peace with their principles of positive peace and their various uh, data sets as well. So I think what's exciting about the governance space is that we're adding the evidence to show what is happening on the ground and also what kinds of interventions from policy standpoint would be beneficial. So thank you very much. So that is my future vision for what the World Academy can accomplish. And it is a thrill to be part of the partnership. Thank you. Thank you very much, Isabella, underlining the need of building a strong working alliance based on value and trust. Now, quickly, I go to Pavel. Ciao, Pavel. Uh, 10 minutes each presenter has 10 minutes uh, because we need also to hear from the audience. Uh, Pavel, please uh, introduce yourself. Yes. Thank you very much, Alberto. Excited to be here. I'm Pavel Lukšer, uh, the founder of uh, Global Education Futures Initiative, uh, which works on the transformation of uh, education and the future of skills. And more recently, I also co-founded a project called University for the Earth, 
which aims to create uh, skill sets, mindsets, and cultivate projects for the regenerated uh, regeneration of uh, the planet and uh, mainstreaming regenerative practices. And uh, thinking about uh, the past few days, the conversation that have been happening and uh, the journey that World Academy uh, has been taking, um, I think we are um, actually in 2020s uh, have entered a really important period of time in human history uh, where we start to see that some of the most fundamental uh, institutions of our uh, society that sort of have been holding uh, our collective space, uh, the uh, global uh, political and economic order, they're sort of sliding. We are facing uh, the decline of the past paradigm that is uh, aggravated by rapid technological progress that is aggravated by uh, 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 environmental crisis uh, and uh, economic and political crisis around the world. Uh, and I think that uh, COVID, uh, first of all, and uh, multiple international conflicts that happened in uh, the last uh, several years are, are symptoms of, of that uh, slide, that, that kind of uh, disbalance uh, that is already present. Uh, it is clear that uh, industrial systems of um, uh, the, the systems created for, for a mass scale industrial uh, civilization that has been dominating our world for the last uh, centuries uh, are no don't longer hold. If we want, let's say, the, uh, say the, the project of humanity, the, the uh, planetary civilization uh, to continue, we need to rethink the foundations on which uh, our society operates. And, and I think this, this, uh, there is a sense of urgency that is now is present and uh, a lot of people feel it, uh, but very few institutions uh, are able to um, champion alternatives to, to actually say what, what can be the pathways into the future. So to me, uh, World Academy is one of a uh, few unique spaces in the world where such conversations can hold can continue and can actually set up uh, the tone for, the, for this transition that needs to happen. And um, um, there are elements of, of the transition that I feel are uh, more obvious to us already, uh, such as uh, dealing with increasingly complex uh, technological systems and information systems and uh, development of artificial intelligence uh, that has been widely discussed in this conference. How do we adapt to uh, the reality of artificial generative uh, artificial intelligence that is basically disrupting every uh, facet of our society uh, from uh, skills and jobs uh, to the way we learn to media to policy making and and beyond uh, with artificial intelligence uh, we discussed it quite extensively in the session yesterday we uh, we are um, standing in the in the kind of junction between uh, let's say very uh, optimistic scenarios of the future and very dark scenarios of the future and the choice is not uh, with only with designers of uh, AI tools. It's, it lies with uh, all of the society and to make uh, designers and users, uh, well, users, I mean, I mean the, uh, large organizations, first of all, that deploy uh, AI uh, accountable uh, to the society. So, uh, and, and the process of development of AI uh, transparent to society is perhaps one of key tasks uh, that uh, key missions that the World Academy currently can undertake. But, but I feel there is uh, much more. Uh, what, what I feel is much more is that um, uh, the same as we experience with AI, where we have the highest potentials and the darkest scenarios ahead of us, 
we are much in a broader sense we are this is the dilemma we are facing for um all of our society will we continue on the pathways which uh, for example deprive people of their rights their opportunity to choose will we move to more increasing the autocratic states uh, the command and control all over the planet will we move into the new era of um, kind of hobbesian war everyone against the everyone or will we transit that and discover uh, possibilities for um, the era of true global peace uh, Isabella, you mentioned uh, just uh, this work on positive peace. Uh, if we think about uh, decades ahead of us, we are now um, uh, at the moment uh, where if we don't find new, new principles of uh, international cooperation, uh, the risk uh, of World War III as, is as high as never, basically, since the end of cold, uh, cold, the Cold War and uh, the possibility of a new thermonuclear war if it happens this will be the dead end of uh, uh, and, and the literal end of uh, uh, human society so we need uh, not just to say how to control uh, nuclear weapons or how to rethink the principles of international cooperation we need to undertake uh, a much more ambitious goal of uh, traveling towards uh, conditions for positive peace, or what we call po peaceful futures. And actually, in uh, in my uh, article in Cadmus uh, last year, as part of uh, human security projects, I advocated for the idea that uh, we should uh, uh, make uh, global peace for all the, the key priority of uh, human security project. Because it actually, if we think about what positive peace entails, it entails every aspect of uh, societal transformation deep democracy changing of economic uh, models uh, inclusive uh, societies uh, transformation of cultures he healing of historical traumas so it really addresses every aspect of what we know as human security and, uh, uh, the third point so the first point is uh, let's let's take very seriously existential risks of uh, new technologies and be a proactive body that uh, creates uh, models how to govern them. Second, let's make peace our top uh, objective that sort of becomes the beacon for, for our efforts in human security. And third thing, our ultimate objective, I think, is to guide uh, civilization to become truly planet-centric, life-aligned, life-affirming, and uh, regenerative. So I think the the idea of regenerative economy and regenerative society, regenerative culture should become, let's say, should be on the banner of World Academy. And we should uh, discover ways how to implement various initiatives, educational initiatives, uh, investment initiatives, policy making initiatives that are enabling this transition to truly regenerative uh, futures i think there is no other choice we need to become regenerative as a species we need to mainstream regenerative activities and that is to me the mission of uh, world academy it can make it happen thank you thank you pavel and reminding us how significant it is uh, to work for having a future and that uh, can be only peaceful and regenerative but thank you very much now and I, i'd we, like we, to we, highlight this maybe the last point uh, okay. I really believe that the future is feminine. I think the female leadership is super critical to make sure that uh, we create conditions for feminine ways of seeing the world and empowering women all over the world to make it beautiful, regenerative and peaceful. Thank you. Thank you. And then, uh, Anna, uh, here, another woman that uh, can tell us uh, how we go ahead and have a future. Please uh, introduce yourself. 
Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm a I'm a diplomat. I'm also an economist, and I'm the vice president of the Croatian chapter of Pegwas Conferences on Science and World Affairs. I'm also a member of the Croatian uh, Club of Rome, and also an associate fellow of the World Academy. And thank you for uh, inviting me. And I must say I agree with my colleagues, uh, and I will now highlight four topics that I think that could be useful uh, for the future of the World Academy. Uh, so the first is changing narratives. Uh, the second is uh, related to governance. The third is related to education. And fourth, related to peace activities. So we already mentioned some of these, but I will now uh, say more about these four topics. So first of all, I think that one of the main insights and opportunities that we have is changing narratives. Uh, as we see that changing the paradigm of national security into human security was a success, and it is now a widespread all over the world within the academic community, the civil society. I think we should continue with this practice. I, I see it as a good opportunity to promote the universal values of humanism through language and changing uh, narratives. So creating our own terms, uh, our own paradigms based on humanity, peace and equality, and then using them in our projects on conferences within publications could help push these concepts into the public space and media, which makes them then more influential and set into the mainstream. Uh, recently, we heard some new terms like peace offensive or mass construction, but also I think we should use the term sustainable peace more, responsible leadership dialogue, respect, cooperation, optimism, trust, collaboration, words and concepts that have to be strengthened in general. Uh, language is very important. Words are energy. And the choice of words and the power of our vocabulary is very important in making an impact. As we know, rhetoric is an ancient skill which, if used correctly and efficiently, can have a great influence on others. Language and rhetoric are important tools in politics and diplomacy, and scientists and academy, ac academics should use it as well. Whatever we talk about, we strengthen. So the second, the World Academy could think of and create new models of economic and political systems. So upgrading current systems or making hybrid ones, using the best qualities of all existing economic and political systems and conduct expert discussions. So I think we agree that the current uh, economic system and political systems are uh, not uh, sustainable. So they are not equitable. Uh, system change, systems change throughout the history. And as we know today in the world, we have many political and economic systems. For example, in Europe, we have mostly parliamentary democracies and capitalism, but also we have monarchies. Uh, in China, we which is a world superpower, we have a different system, but, but also in many other countries in Asia and around the world. So I think we should engage in a deep and detailed dialogue with economic philosophers, political scientists, but also other think tanks and international organizations that deal with global issues to explore the possibilities of upgrading the systems that we have today and maybe propose some new ideas and models, not just one, but several. Uh, here we must, of course, have an open mind to accept different options for the benefit of humanity. Humanism, human rights, meritocracy, the right ratio, the right amount of interventionism with freedoms of the individual, as well as taking into account equality and equity. These concepts has, have to be our priority and leading ideas for, the, for those upgraded models. Uh, and when I say new concepts of economic and political management, I also mean global leadership models and structures. We could, for example, set working groups or thematic panels and produce a document with concrete proposals. The more, the better, in my, in my opinion. So third uh, is education. Comprehensive, permanent education and lifelong learning should always be our focus. But also studies of human nature, the deeper education, the one, as Aristoteles call it, calls it, the education of the heart. That means focus on emotional intelligence, empathy, practical psychology and ethics. In the last decades, we, we made too much progress in the STEM field, but somehow we neglected the humanities. 
In today's world, we don't lack scientific or technological progress. We lack ethics and empathy. So uh, we should promote more ethics, more emotional intelligence, and practical psychology in global education. Also, holistic lifelong learning has to become a standard in education, in my opinion, as well as making the existing knowledge accessible to all. And finally, the fourth, we have to strengthen our peace campaigns. I would suggest making a campaign with our creative forces, our colleagues from the arts and the creative industry, and call it, for example, World, World Artists for Peace. Uh, I would like to see videos, films, exhibitions, marketing campaigns with the topic of peace, songs like Imagine or Earth Song, uh, concerts like the Live Aid. We all remember the impact of these types of events they had in, they in their time. Art speaks through emotions, and we must appeal to the emotions of our global fellow citizens to join this peace campaign and make them aware that we are all brothers and sisters sharing one earth and one future. So the World Academy could appoint world ambassadors for peace, just like the UN does it. They could be our members or prominent personalities, artists, scientists, philosophers, professors. The World Academy can also appoint world ambassadors for our other causes, for example, ambassadors for sustainable development, for dialogue of continents, for disarmament, for ethics within new technologies with concrete tasks. So these are some of my proposals and I would like to hear the comments mm -hmm. of my colleagues and thank you so much. Thank you so much to you, Anna, for this uh, bonanza of uh, wonderful suggestion and also reminding us uh, that uh, we should empower ourselves uh, because we are creating reality every time we open our mouth and yes. speak yes. and we do create a word and then we inhabit so we better be sustainable architects uh, of our present and future thank you very much and now let's go to our Vice President Donato Kinike Passigli. Donato, present yourself in 10 minutes like the other, please. Thank you very much for inviting me uh, and um, for taking part in this very interesting discussions. I, I relate to many of the issues that have been raised. Uh, and uh, I think that, as Pavel said, uh, peace should be the priority. Uh, and probably this was also the sense of the uh, the, the famous sentence that uh, Isabella has uh, evoked, the Russell yeah. Einstein manifesto, when we talked when they talked about uh, the importance of remembering humanity and forgetting the rest. I mean, the the essence is, as as you also said, remembering the most important thing: we are humans after all, and and that. The rest derives from that. Uh, so in, in a sense, uh, adding things would only detract from what we really are and what is our ultimate goal. Uh, and that's why I really like what you all said, and, and Pavel in particular, because I believe that uh, peace uh, should be our objective. And uh, there are many, many genuine initiatives worldwide uh, uh, pacifism, first of all, disarmament. But on the other hand, we have to be very pragmatic, not forgetting uh, that we also have to have a certain degree of idealism, as we all have. Uh, now, what, uh, what uh, uh, provokes my initiative here uh, today is the fact that I've been thinking about this theme and, uh, uh, and others have, uh, have written uh, many Many books and, and authors have uh, developed so many good theories about conflict management. I'm also uh, a conflict manager, uh, besides being the, the vice president of the World Academy and a former UN official. So my, my interest is to launch a peace offensive. And, and this term, peace offensive, uh, as you may recall, has been used in the 60s. Uh, the first one to use this term was Charles Osgood, that uh, probably Alberto remembers, because uh, as yourself, was a psychologist, uh, and a very famous psychologist, who really concentrated on the uh, elements of peace and what provokes peace, instills peace in people's minds. 
uh, Osgood wrote an article that I retrieved that is simply called Reciprocal Initiative. Very blunt, very simple. In reality, uh, he studied the subject very deeply and uh, uh, he developed a theory that is called graduated reciprocation of uh, uh, intention reductions. Great. Uh, graduated reciprocation intention reaction. Uh, this is not only uh, psychological, it's really related to uh, how um, the dynamics of uh, peace initiatives are, uh, are developed. Um, and, and many peace initiatives actually follow this pattern. Uh, this is not a new theory, even the Romans used uh, the, the concept of dog death, meaning that you have to uh, concede something initially in order to uh, entice others to con concede on their side, maybe later on. So these uh, concessions and this uh, uh, plan that can be um, prepared ahead in a timely manner with various initiatives, consequent, consequent initiatives uh, that not necessarily uh, provoke an immediate response that is not necessarily in a, an idealistic approach, uh, can be very realistic in a sense, and uh, um, you know the, the possibilities of applying this this concept to various mediations, negotiations ongoing, even those who do not exist right now. But given the fact that in most of the conflicts, the uh, the most prominent ones and the forgotten ones that uh, unfortunately the world is uh, full of, uh, in in all these situations. There are openings, there are possibilities for um, enemies uh, to, uh, to discuss, to discuss and to inaugurate a, a negotiation process of some sort, a direct or indirect negotiation process. So the, 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 the relevance of uh, the uh, uh, graduated reciprocation uh, in intention reduction approach is uh, prepare uh, ahead of time plans in order that you can test the ground uh, as uh, when you take the initiative in this sense and you can uh, see if you get a positive response. So uh, with this in mind, and, and I have articulated that in an article that will be uh, published soon in Cadmus, in the next issue of Cadmus with uh, Gary Jacobs uh, forward, um, we, we can imagine that the approach can be followed, for instance, in, in, in the conflict uh, in, uh, in the Middle East or the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. So let's imagine, for instance, because we, in, in, in a sense it's an exercise of imagination, uh, that uh, by October 1st, uh, the uh, uh, Israeli uh, occupying army in, in, in Gaza gives unimpeded access to humanitarian aid. Uh, and, and then also water and electricity in, in this occupied land. Uh, let's imagine uh, that at the same time, uh, we, we have uh, uh, a reciprocation in that sense, and, and we can have that in, uh, also for the conflict in, in Ukraine, uh, where uh, you may research that uh, the um, uh, Russians decide uh, not to, uh, uh, let's say, expose the, the entire planet to a nuclear um, reaction and, and withdrawing troops from Zaporizhia and, and, the, and, the, and that power plant that is under threat right now. I'm just giving examples. But so we have, um, uh, I put down a sort of wish list that is my wish list, but many others could have a, another uh, theoretical wish list that can be corroborated with, uh, um, with solid plans. Now, who can contribute to that? Everybody can contribute to that. I mean, uh, organizations, international organizations that want to cooperate for this peace offensive, well-coordinated peace offensive that can be as effective as a military campaign. Uh, uh, of course, international organizations devoted to peace, 
but also uh, academies, non-governmental organizations, individuals. And this becomes very relevant when we uh, speak also about uh, the uh, future of our planet and the UN in, in the future. We, we will have this conference in September uh, at the UN uh, trying to revamp multilateralism. What kind of multilateralism can we think of is not based on international cooperation. So international cooperation is the foundations of multilateralism. And for that purpose, we need also to think in terms of which concessions one can give to the other in order to promote peace, uh, not only, as I said, as a unilateral step, but as a gradual step that can be followed by subsequent initiatives. So this is what I wanted to briefly uh, present today, since uh, Alberto, you gave me this opportunity, uh, to say that um, the World Academy, uh, since we started talking about this uh, approach, uh, seems quite, uh, um, let's say, cohesive around the, the, the theme and, and this uh, particular initiative. So we think that can be part and parcel of the human security for all campaign, as uh, as Pavel was saying, that also should, should take precedence on any other initiative that we have uh, right now uh, ongoing or that we are planning for the future. So I'd be happy to take questions if this is an issue of your interest. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, uh, thank you for this uh, uh, wonderful proposal. And now uh, to the audience uh, we have uh, uh, 15 minutes uh, to have a uh, feedback, uh, not only to Donato, but uh, to uh, every panelist, uh, and uh, more uh, than that, uh, to the World Academy of Art and Science, uh, because we have created this panel just uh, to receive feedback uh, and proposal for our future activity. And uh, please, uh, uh, what you say, very brief, uh, one minute, uh, and if there are questions, uh, one minute answer, so uh, many people can, uh, okay, Elena, please. Yes, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, I am going to be very quick, first of all, to really thank you for the excellent comments today and the excellent contributions. And in continuation uh, to what was said and uh, recommended today and also what I spoke about yesterday as well, I would like to propose that it would be powerful for the World Academy to develop a master project on deep education for human security in the 21st century. Because when we start talking about deep education for human security, that includes everything from practical psychology and emotional intelligence to issues of governance, just and sustainable planetary governance, to issues of citizenship, also to issues of justice, unitive justice versus the kind of uh, divisive understanding of justice that is tearing the planet apart. Also, more importantly, the very nature of reality, we cannot have deep education for human security unless we educate people in the understanding of reality that the physical sciences are putting forth now, that we share the reality of consciousness with all living things. The nature of consciousness is to evolve when we learn about about when we have a real evolutionary deep education that includes justice, governance, uh, basic science, uh, psychology of development, uh, practical psychology and skills, and very, very important, two more things that are often missed and not mentioned. An evolutionary understanding of history, I think is critical. I spoke a lot about it yesterday because otherwise we have a way of getting very disillusioned and having a static <clears throat> black and white approach to history, which I think is not helpful. And along with an evolutionary understanding of history, we also need to develop in young people and in all of us, consultative skills. Consultation, Thank you very much. not today. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Elena. Thank you very much. Next, Hansa, we Thank want you. to hear from you. 
Thank you very much. I'll be trying to be brief. Three points, yeah. basically. I think we should be careful of uh, not uh, overcharging our agenda. We are uh, an NGO, and uh, I don't think we can cope and compete with what the UN and other organizations cannot do. <sighs> Second point, I think uh, what attracted me always at WAS was uh, the emphasis on arts and science. Uh, when I hear the debate today, it seems to me that, that we are twisting also again towards uh, economy and other issues, which again are being handled by other organizations maybe better. To me, it seems, of course, peace is an overarching uh, issue, which uh, every organization like ours also uh, should pursue. But I think we have to create a nexus between peace, sustainability, science and culture. And with sustainability, we have science and culture in there, which unfortunately, in their wisdom or lack of wisdom, the UN in 2015 did not see uh, fit to include among the uh, SDGs. Now, we, have, we should, already with the name of our organization, try that we can elevate and emphasize the role and the contribution of science and the arts and culture to the betterment of the world. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hans, for your suggestion. I see Olivia Bina and also it's big. Olivia? Yes, hello. Hi, Alberto. Thank Ciao, you. Olivia. Buongiorno. Very briefly, I just wanted to perhaps counter a little bit the comment that was just made because I think that uh, WAS has done a fantastic job at connecting what is what needs to be connected. So I would endorse that we keep doing that. However, without dispersion, and that is a difficult balance, I agree. Um, so maybe discussions about how we do that, we continue to do that effectively into the future would be great. And then I just want to leave my support for Pavel's comment in, around the need for positive and you know enticing visions for the future also linked to the ideas of regenerative futures, which has been uh, becoming very common in the last few years. I could go on, but I will leave others to speak. And thanks a lot for all the wonderful speakers. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you. It's big. I have a, two questions, if I may, uh, to the panel, and uh, particularly to Pavel. Uh, and the first question is how we could... Uh, achieve peace without condemning the aggressors in Ukraine or Middle East. And the question to Anna, uh, how we could collaborate uh, effectively if we do not use the language to tell the truth, but to manipulate or to avoid telling the truth. Thank you. Thank you, Pavel and Anna. You first, Pavel, a uh, short answer, please. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Zbigniew, thank you for this question. First of all, I agree that uh, aggressors should be condemned. Uh, the way I see pathways to peace, especially for uh, uh, NGOs like uh, WAAS, is that we need to cultivate conditions for positive peace. When wars are already raging, it's often very hard to stop. But civic society, scientists, artists, they can create conditions for future wars not to happen. This is, I think, our collective task. We need to focus on positive peace. Thank you. Anna, please. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I didn't mean manipulation with words. I meant just strengthening the positive pole because I was referring, for example, of the state of mental health of the society, which is uh, constantly... Uh, affected by the terms used in the media, on social media, and that is violence, uh, conflicts, wars, shocking content. Uh, so it's affecting our mental health and the youth. And I think that we are not manipulating with our uh, uh, with our ch with the change of our narrative, we we are just sl slightly changing uh, the 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 way we see reality. So it's not just that in the world exist only conflicts. 
there, there also exist many peaceful activities. We, For example, you can talk about conflict management or you can talk about uh, collaboration and understanding. Those are th like the similarities, but the nuances are important. So I don't think it's manipulation. I just think that we have to put the emphasis, uh, emphasis on positive, uh, positive narratives. Thank you. And uh, I see Isabella has uh, raised a hand. So what to, would like uh, to share? Thank you. Well, Alberto, it's, uh, it's uh, an addition to the question you would ask me, which is, I am many things, what are they? But given <laughs> the course of the conversation, I wanted to add that I am a member of the Oxford Peace Research Trust. And our main raison d'etre is to establish an endowed chair in perpetuity at the University of Oxford, because we know that if Oxford does something in this space, it'll create its own sort of ecosystem of research and uh, publications and conferences <clears throat> and so forth. And also there is an Oxford network for peace studies, which holds an annual conference. But the key is interdisciplinarity. It's women's studies, journalism, politics, area studies, psychology, diplomacy, AI, public policy, religion, development, law, human rights, it's everything. And I think the perspective is that all of these subjects have something to contribute, you know, to Anna's point as well, something to contribute to understanding peace, peace building and peacekeeping. So I did just want to mention that. And if anyone would like to let, write a check for an adult chair in peace studies, please let me know. That's great uh, to know and a wonderful uh, endeavor. Maybe not to write in a check, but you could invite uh, some of our exponent uh, of human security like uh, Gary uh, Donato to uh, intervene uh, and interact uh, with you uh, who better than you that uh, you are also a World uh, Academy Fellow? <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing that I might be able to persuade my colleagues is to actually perhaps have a conference focusing on the work of the World Academy in peace. But uh, I, I alone cannot deliver that. We are very collaborative. Uh, I see some thumbs up. Thank you for that, Pavel. <laughs> but I think that the subjects that we we grapple with are very creative in the in in both senses of the word. They're innovative, but they also could bring into being something truly remarkable. So thank you for that. Thank you to you, and more power to you for this wonderful work. And if you want us uh, to contribute, uh, we'd be honored. Uh, Gary Donato and others uh, are working. Uh, with the United Nations uh, uh, Human Security Initiatives, uh, as you well know. Since uh, there are only three minutes, uh, I will ask uh, the panelists uh, if they want to add uh, anything uh, to this uh, rich uh, and variegated uh, you know, uh, brainstorming uh, on uh, how we can uh, contribute uh, meaningfully to the future of humanity considering that the atomic clock uh, is clicking faster and faster? Alberto, we all agreed on that point. I mean, we have to find ways to bring people together. I mean, people don't want war. Uh, people want to, uh, mutual understanding, want development, want a better life for everybody. Uh, and uh, I think we have the means. Uh, the fact is that we have to have the opportunities. Uh, so working together and reforming institutions that are not functioning right now, uh, making sure that we really revamp multilateralism in a positive way with the true collaboration is the way to go forward. Thank you. Thank you. There is also Anna and Pavel. Very quickly. Go ahead, I, Anna. Yes. I think that it's very important to uh, address the root causes of inequalities and injustice and conflicts that exist uh, in the world today. And I think that is also a task of the World Academy. And I, uh, I will just like to refer what was mentioned earlier. Uh, science, there, um, the political science and economic science, th this is also science. So it's not just, uh, we often uh, see uh, the natural sciences as when we say uh, World Academy of Art and Science, but also science is political science and philosophy and humanities and uh, social sciences and economic science. This is also science. So I think that uh, if we address the, uh, the, the root causes of the inequalities and the unsustainable uh, world that we live in, 
uh, I think that that's the way to peace. So that that is why I mentioned this, uh, to make this maybe working groups. We we can't uh, we can't uh, find solutions for every everything. I agree, but we can try. We can join our forces and try to address the causes because the causes are more more important than the consequences. The consequences we see every day, but the causes are here for centuries, for decades, and we kind of neglect them or we don't see them or we kind of just just deal with. The consequences, but the root causes are what we have to address together. Thank you, thank you. Last minute for Pavel. Yeah, first of all, uh, I think uh, uh, the there were several really exciting suggestions. So one from Yelena on putting together uh, an educational program. I would like to highlight that this is a very good uh, idea, and I think that World Academy really can contribute by cultivating such types of programs. So let's explore this. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I think the other topic that was highlighted by uh, commenters was the role of art. And uh, um, I would like to say on one hand, we should remember that the role of art in 21st century should be different given the, the challenges we are facing. We art needs to be at the frontiers of this uh, collective human evolution. So art needs to be action, but uh, let's discover how art can serve the, the purpose of peace, the purpose of regenerative cultures, and let uh, World Academy be the space to explore it. Thank you. Actually, we have no more time except to thank you panelists and everybody that intervened and that will make a suggestion by mailing us. We can make it all together now. Thank you very much.